What's good, YouTube? DM Gaming here, guys. Hope everybody's having an awesome day, morning, afternoon, evening, whenever it is that you're watching this video, guys. Today, we are going to go over uh, wear and tear, and not, you know, in a sense of telling what it is, but more giving you a tips and tricks sort of video that can help you get the edge on your competition as well as better manage your wear and tear so you don't have to miss out on this game changing feature so guys if you're new to the channel please hit that subscribe button click that bell icon so you don't miss a single upload later today we will be going live with the uh road to glory deep dive um that's gonna be fun that's gonna be extensive so you definitely want to tune into that so wear and tear all right first of all what is wear and tear what is wear and tear and how can how can we uh better manage it the game describes wear and tear as a feature that takes the football gridiron to an unprecedented level of realism this feature ensures every hit matters and not all hits are created equal wear and tear is just literally guys literally the bumps and bruises that every football player takes throughout a game and throughout a season so anybody that's played football and know that you feel sore sometimes after a football game or even during a football game sometimes you take big hits and you may need to take a breather or something like that or you kind of uh rough up yourself and hey maybe you don't run as fast or you don't cut as hard or quarterbacks maybe you don't throw the ball as hard or something to that degree wear and tear is simply that it's just the wear and tear that players get throughout every game and of course, that builds up over a season. Some of the most successful teams in both high school, college, and NFL are successful because their players are healthy at the end of the season. Because what do they always tell you? The season is a grind, and it's even more of a grind whenever you're going into playoffs and bowl games and things of that nature. A lot of people, what is one of the biggest misconceptions with wear and tear? A lot of people's misconception with wear and tear is that it's an injury deal. Oh, if it's in the severe, that means that my player is going to get injured. That is not true. While, yes, your player can still get injured, wear and tear doesn't increase the chance of injury. It just basically kind of gives you a diagnostic look at your player and the physicality of the game that he's playing. Now, if it is severe... Does it mean that he's going to get hurt if he, no, it just regularly in a game. Think realistically, if I continue to get hit in my left leg, eventually something's going to break. You know what I'm saying? Eventually something's going to hurt. But the way wear and tear works, it's separate from the injury system. The injury system, EA said, has not changed. It won't change. It's going to stay the same. Wear and tear kind of is a mix or a cross paths between your fatigue levels and your injury statuses does that make sense so the way that wear and tear works guys it is more or less a debuff of sorts does that make sense and we have the image here that they've given us of donovan edwards his wear and tear risk of injury is increased he's taking a big hit to his uh left shoulder and his right leg and of course his left ankle so what does wear and tear do it doesn't mean that if he continues to get hit he's gonna get hurt it just it more or less is a stat debuff and you can see here wear and tear impact his left shoulder because of it being in the slight it's gonna get a minus three to his break tackle a minus three to his catch a minus two to his carry his right leg minus four to break tackle so that's a total of minus seven to his break tackle because of his left shoulder and his right leg he got a minus three to his change of direction and a minus three to his speed okay and when you look at his left shoulder being minus two in carry understand that hey that means if that ball is in his left arm that's going to that minus two is going to apply to that. Not so much to his right arm, his left foot minus four to change of direction. So you're going to add those two together for a total of minus seven to his change of direction, minus three to his break tackle and a minus three to his speed. Now, before you say, oh, my gosh, that means his change direction is going to be terrible. Guys, every player in the game, both offense, defense, uh all of that they are going to deal with wear and tear so if that makes sense for for that instance that everybody on the field is going to be dealing with wear and tear then it lets you know that yeah while your player may decrease in certain attributes 
other players are also decreasing as well. Your offensive lineman, your defensive lineman, your cornerbacks, your receivers. Now, understand this. The players that are taking the least amount of contact, i.e. your receivers, your corners, they're the least contacted people. Really, your cornerbacks are, you know. But they are still going to deal with wear and tear from making tackles and getting stiff arm and trucked and all kinds of things like that. So understand, Ed, this affects everybody on the field. So it doesn't mean, once again, that you're just going to be prone to injury and stuff like that. But it really means that this is going to be just your typical grind in a football game. In the uh, deep dive, the, the dynasty deep dive, with the introduction of wear and tear, the weak management of your players is more essential than ever. So this is going to be on a week to week basis. If you're doing the play now, it's not really going to affect you. It's just going to affect you for that game. But if you're doing a dynasty, it's going to build up over time. You're going to recover. All right. Throughout the week, just like you would in any other sport. But it doesn't completely go away. It depends on the level. For example, if Donovan Edwards here was on a severe, then next week it probably lower to a high or maybe even a slight. The slight one should go away within a week, though. Each week, players will recover from some of their wear and tear damage. The amount of recovery is dependent on how damaged the body party is. For example, let's say in the previous game, your running back severely damaged his right ankle and his left shoulder was only slightly damaged. The next week, you can expect his shoulder to be fully recovered and his ankle to only be slightly recovered. His ankle would then be something you want to monitor in the game. So if they're just slightly bruised and bumped, they'll be good to go for the next week. If they're severely bruised and bumped, that's something you want to manage because they're going to start the game with the slight uh, damage or slight wear and tear to that impacted area. So it sounds scary on the surface. Oh my gosh, I don't want to get my starting running back bruised up. Guys, this is very realistic. Very realistic to football. Now you can understand why coaches throw a tantrum whenever the quarterback gets hit in a game and even in practice. And you can even see now why these uh, sports analysts and even fans praise a quarterback that takes a ton of sacks and stays in the game and still produces at a high level. <coughs> Shador Sanders. But I will say this. The thing about it is this, guys. How do I manage it? How do I, I like the feature. Why? Because it, it, it allows you or it rather puts you in a position to rotate your players to really think about how you play the game and play it from a more realistic standpoint. You're not going to be able to run the ball for 30, 40 times a game with a running back that is a speed back. Now, there are abilities to help with this. There are certain abilities that a running back can get that, that limits his wear and tear. It makes it so that he doesn't accumulate it as much. And it, actually, any player can get this. It's also tied to your player's toughness ratings. So if you run an option-style offense where your backs are going to take hits, you're running the ball a thousand times a game, you need to find running backs and linemen and quarterbacks that have a high toughness rating. Why? Because that's going to limit the amount of wear and tear they take. Conversely, on defense, the higher a player's toughness, the more wear and tear they're going to be able to deliver on their opponents. Yes, that is true. So if you have a hard-hitting safety and he has a lot of toughness, he's going to be able to deliver an impact to the other players wear and tear a lot more. So understand that there's attributes. I mean, there's abilities to help that, but there's also a realistic look at things. And that's what I really want to get into the, in this video is talking about the realistic way to manage your wear and tear. The realistic way to manage your wear and tear, guys, is play the game just like they would in real life. If you're a quarterback, don't sit there and take a sack. Every now and then, you may have to take one. Hey, but dive on the ground. Slide. Don't take a big hit. Get out of bounds. Throw the ball out of bounds. You see what I'm saying? That's how they play in real life. Why? Because they don't want the quarterback all bruised and, and knotted up. Same thing for the running backs. There's a time and a place for you to lower your shoulders and deliver the boom. But then there's also a time and place for you to get out of bounds and spare not getting hit, especially if you have a smaller, more agile, speedy type back. Now, receivers, you catch a pass over the middle. There's two guys right there. You can try to break a tackle if you want to, or you can do what a lot of receivers like even Jerry Rice would do and just fall on the ground. Now you're down and you're spared a big hit. Guys, 
managing wear and tear. It's nothing to be afraid of. And I love it because if you like simulation football and you want this game to play as realistic as possible, keep wear and tear turned on. Now you can turn it off in the options menu, but I implore y'all to keep your wear and tear turned on and just learn how to manage it. Learn how to play with it by playing realistic football, getting your backs out of bounds when it's unnecessary for you to take a big hit, getting your quarterbacks out of harm's way. This is going to make I mean, to me, it literally changes how you play the game because now you're going to be recruiting offensive linemen. You're going to make sure that you sign some good offensive linemen so your quarterback isn't taking big hits. You're going to make sure that you get tough running backs who can carry the ball. You're going to make sure that you're not running your running back a million times a game, and now your backups are getting into the game. Your second, even third string backs are going to be able to play, and it's going to be even more important in recruiting because now you have to make sure you're getting quality backups in the game and from a defensive standpoint i like it even more why because now you can play it realistic hey if i got a big bruising back i'm gonna make sure that we're tackling him in his legs because what is that gonna do it's gonna affect his change of direction it's gonna affect his speed it's gonna affect his break and tackle it's literally going to slow that back down and take him out of the game so Guys, let me know what y'all think. Do you think that you will be able to manage wear and tear? Are you still going to play with it on in your game? Let me know in the comment section down below, guys. Don't be a point, Dexter. Subscribe to the channel, man. Tune in later for the live stream. Guys, that's all I got for right now. Till next time, y'all. Thanks for watching. Peace.